<clears throat> what is up guys, I'm Quartz and welcome back to week 6 of the UBL and we're going up against the Flying Bird and his South Eastern or Western, for the life of me I can't remember, uh, Whalemers. <laughs> it's pretty sorry, it's wild Southwestern. That said, um, he made some changes to his team, um, which is quite alright with me. Uh, he dropped Buswell, Nihilego and um, Drampa. While Drampa isn't necessarily a threat, Buswell definitely was, and even so Nihilego was also. His change was to Manaphy, it was to Machamp and it was to Neuven. So he got a lot more speedier, but at the same time, I think he lost one of the primer checks to Zygarde. Which is quite fair, consider I actually aren't bringing Zygarde for this game. It is considered though, and I will show you why I didn't bring it, but yeah, I thought those series of changes were strange. Um, it does work in my favor, however, and Neho Lego more so, because his team actually isn't dealing too well with fire types. While we do have two Pokemons that are water, um, Quillfish and Wars Manaphy, none of them really deals well with Neuburn head on. I'm gonna go over why, um, because I was debating whether you could bring Neuburn or not, but the set I'm bringing could be effective. Um, it could also bite me in the ass depending on what type of sets he's bringing, but I'm, I'm feeling strong here. Ish. Uh, so yeah, as for later, his team is Clefable, Manaphy, Tapu Koku, Ferrothorn, Darmanitan, Krukodile, Machamp, Neuburn, Quillfish, Rufflet, and Abomasnow. Uh, now I went over to the team actually with a friend of mine called Ashenakai. Major shout out to you. Uh, one of the best, I would say, league players I know, and um, he actually just defied that you know you you are weak to Rufflet. In, in aspects you are um, hustle. After all, do damage quite high, and I think my bulkier Pokemon is actually slower than Rufflet, and that could be an issue. And it has secret still, so one might never know. It actually, in theory, are able to one kill Dainchi, <laughs> so th that's kind of exciting. Um, so yeah, this sets some brain. First and foremost, we have um, Conkeldur, which is an adamant assault vest variant, which sheer force um, shouldn't be sheer force. It should be guts, but no, we're sending with sheer force for one reason, and it's gonna be a gamble. But there is no reason for his mana fee um, to have skull here. He's gonna have surf. That's why we decided to have sheer force instead. So I shouldn't bait for any type of um, <clears throat> what do you call it. Uh, any type of um, status on my Conkeldur. Uh, the reason is because we're actually quite specially defensive this time around because we are going to be forced to be able to deal with both Neuvern and um, Manaphy both being very capable of setting up or at least do a significant amount of damage and also Clefable is a Pokemon that's very very tough here. I was considering bringing the max speed Conkeldur to be able to speed a defensive Clefable but I just I lost, lost so much bulk that it wasn't worth it. Um, <clears throat> so attack wise here we're quite standard, we're Drain Punch, Poison Jab, Thunder Punch and Mag Punch. So yeah, I cannot hit actually Neumann for super effective damage. The reason I decided for this is because it just is so frail that I should be able to do a good chunk anyway with Thunder Punch. It's not an ideal, it's a sack play if I do, but the option is going to be there. Drain Punch does a fair amount of damage to most of the team anyway. Poison Jab is only there for Clefable. It actually is that very reason. Thunder Punch is there for Manaphy and for Quillfish. Um, that's really basically it. And the Mag Punch is any type of uh, speedier Crocodile or Darmanitan should be able to be shipped down. Um, <clears throat> like, we went over whether or not he was able to have a default in his team. And Coco and uh, Rufflet, I guess. And uh, Neuvern are his only hazard removals. And I don't believe. They're so good offensively that it would just be a very high risk of having default on any of them, but I'm absolutely gonna ensure that I get hasses up, mainly to wear down their mana time, which is gonna be a very effective Pokemon versus me. Uh, the other Pokemon here is my only check for their mana time to some extent, and that is Dianchi, a bold Shukaberry Dianchi. We did consider Barbier Berry for only Rufflet, but I basically decided that, you know, if Rufflet is that set, I think it's gonna be. Is gonna be a threat to for one or two turns, and then you know something is gonna go down. Absolutely, but it's absolutely going down itself. I don't believe it's that big of a threat, even though it is an effective Pokemon. That is uh, basically here. Sugarberry is here mainly for 
staying in versus Darmanitan, which could very well have Earthquake. And of course, Crookedile, which can actually revenge kill uh, if you stay in versus that, so go for an Earthquake. Um, stat wise, um, we have a li little bit of speed. Uh, actually, without speed, it's a fable. I do want to be first on those hits if it's a defensive variant. Uh, some special attack, definitely not high. And just rest is put on the bulk because we need to be bulky. Um, move wise, we're Earth Power, Moon Blast, Hidden Power, Fire, and Stealth Rock. Hidden Power Fire is only there for Ferrafone. While it will work for Bomber Snow, it actually want to kill it too. I feel if it brings a Bomber Snow, it's going to be only for Psyguard, which is kind of the reason I have avoided bringing it. And of course, um, Moonblast is great overall as a team. The only thing that deals, I would say, well versus this Pokemon is Manaphy, which can survive it and set up against it. So I need to switch out the energy if Manaphy comes in. I'm, Manaphy is not a threat until it sets up a tail though. But that's something you need to watch out for, which is why I bring an Assault Vest, Cryogonal. <sighs> now this set is weird. Um, it's absolutely not your standard um, Cryogonal, and um, while recovery variant of uh, this Pokemon probably would have been better, uh, what this ensured me is that I can survive at least two hits from Surf with a, from a Tail Glowed uh, Manaphy. It actually is superb when it comes to being offensively very capable. And due to that, I am able to create KO a man if you would freeze try. And yeah, as you guys probably noticed, I'm very, very focused on that mana fee because it's a Pokemon that can absolutely outspeed us. And of course, a Solvest cannot negate any effectiveness that comes from Neuvern and Coco for this battle. Um, now, when it comes to this, uh, the stats, able to creep, um, the base 100 mana fee, that's it. And then we're offensive. So. We're definitely relying on the hits, uh, Cryogonal's natural bull for this game. Uh, we have Free Strike, Flash Cannon, Hidden Power, Fire, and then Rapid Spin. Um, I was considered either Flash Cannon or Water Pulse. The thing is here, Darmanitan will probably be the switch in here or Ferrafone. Um, I feel it's more likely Ferrafone, which is why I decided that Hidden Power Fire is better, because with 2 hit KO Ferrafone, if we predict that right. Uh, Flash Cannon is basically for Clefable, which can set up against us. Um, Darmanitan is absolutely a threat, uh, no doubt about it. I just think I can be effective with this. Um, a water pulse has such a low damage output anyway, uh, but it is roughly fifty percent hit on Darmanitan. But when it is the only one Pokemon, it feels so risky. Plus, Flash Cannon does also do super effective damage. So Bomber Snows have wider option, even though Hidden Power Fire is the better play. Just to be able to being able to you know, use anything here is really good. Um, depending on how my opponent play, I'm going to sack Krogonal, um, if their mana then is potentially scoffed or not, because that's something I fear. Um, and depending on how this game will develop, uh, my hopes is that I get a mana fee out of the way and I sack Krogonal to their mana ten. That's the game plan, basically. Uh, I want to stop a setup and I want to stop a sweep uh, with this Krogonal set, so we'll see how that works. The execution could be kind of iffy, and um, of course I can't rapid spin versus a ferret form which sets up rocks, and I'm very aware of that. However, we can stay in versus Krogonal, or I mean Krogodal. Krogodal can stay in against Krogodal, and of course versus Quailfish, so it, it deals with them really well. Uh, it makes them very hard to set up hazard naturally, uh, which is why it made sense for this matchup. And then we have our standard Tagro, the Bow Ride Show, the relaxed Assault Vest Regenerator Fat Bastard. It's super boring to bring every week, I feel, but it really does solve so many defensive roles for me. Defense or stat wise, we have special defensive this time around. This Pokemon should only deal with Coco. Uh, we are bold reason for. Um, we are bold reason. We are bold to be able to survive um, Jolly Sea Braybird from Tap Coco. I don't need an investment besides my HP. However, uh, it should be stated that that probably is the worst possible set for me to force me to fend off against because everything else I do well against. So, yeah, that's scary. I do not like <laughs> that aspect at all. Um, and of course, Darmanitan just pluck this Tangrove really easily. Um, everything else I feel is fine. I guess if I've got to fear something, it's going to be a Guts, Flame Orb, Machamp, which outspeeds this Pokemon and Ice Punch should do over 50%. Um, the stat, this other attacks here are Giga Drain, Hidden Power Fire. Hidden Power Fire is only there for, um, actually not Veraform, but Abomasnow, which I feel is a natural switch in him, for him. 
And of course, I would say Farrafon is of course hits it with this. Sludge Bomb is there for Clefable and Coco to some extent. Um, so as you guys can see, we're not hitting Neuber in that way. Well, if it comes to the game, which I feel is unlikely. Uh, and then with Earthquake, barely for Darmanitan, but also for Coco, depending on which set I think it is. Earthquake is most often than not the most secure play because it does mean I get some ship on the Farrafon. Um, if I go for it, and I feel like I go for Sludge Bomb, it's gonna be, of course, a wasted turn, if anything. So that's that's the definition of the things, of the things. That's the that's the gist of things. Um, like I said, Coco is only there for. Uh, God, I'm screwing this up. Tangrove is only there for Coco. Um, it should be stated that Manaphy should be able to want to kill this Pokemon after one Tail Glow, um, depending on how healthy I am, which set it is. I only have, um, like I said, I have bulk, but I don't believe, like, this bulk basically makes me survive a timid ice beam at plus three, but that's about it. So it's absolutely there for Coco. So don't believe in that bulk, because I, I definitely won't. Uh, <laughs> then we have Thunderous, a Yasha Berry timid uh, Thunderous, which is Prankston, really shouldn't matter. Um, reason i have fun with this game is because of mana fee like like i said before every pokemon here significant role is to deal with the mana fee at first had a modest set with agility uh, but it doesn't have speed mana fee and it could be very 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 scary if i screw that up so um we went for nasty plot the nasty plot set is gonna be quite right and like i said here we have enough speed to outspeed um the mana fee besides that we have a few special defensive bulk because it made sense uh, it absolutely is if Coco is going to be offensively active versus me and I screw that matchup up. I want to be Neuvern, which definitely can also be an issue for this team. Um, even though, like I said, I feel unlikely that it brings it. Uh, stats here, Thunderbolt, Sludge Wave, Focus Blast. Focus Blast is absolutely there for, for Krugadal and Ferrophone. They're definitely not taking it. The question is whether I land it. Uh, Sludge Wave is for um, Clefable only, actually, because it actually is a very, very special defensively good Pokemon. It also is good for a Bomber Snow, that's why we have Yasha Berry, so we don't have some kind of Ice Shard situation. Uh, and then we have Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt does fare against the rest, it actually is. After one Nasty Plot, there really aren't anything that's surviving it, unless it is somewhere Assault Vest Machamp, for example. No Gun Machamp could have been an issue here, I think. But then Conkeller is probably the chick for that anyway. So, yeah. That makes sense. I kind of realize here they have a five specially offensive Pokemon. I do believe Vipsis did something like that, and that was very, very offensive for for my players. I hope he he has a tendency to get frustrated at games, so I think that works in my favor. I'm just going to have that setting. I'll go over why um, soon. The next and last Pokemon we're using is Salasal. Now, Salasal here, Orchid, is a modest set, able to outspeed Manaphy. And that's really it. Since Manaphy isn't a C user, I don't expect it to be C rain, or it wouldn't be. So it has two roles for this game. Uh, it's either going to be able to, with the stat distribution, of course, let's see. Um, <clears throat> it's barely able to outspeed, as you guys can see. 170, one, yeah, 176. 167, I mean, is base 100. So we just outspeed that, and then we're modest. We're going to be able to deal a significant amount of damage and toxic plate is ensuring that we're gonna 2 it KO Manaphy from natural. Uh, <clears throat> Sludge Wave do roughly 50%, a bit over if it is offensive, and if one, after one last but we guarantee a KO. Fire Blast is because, well, Ferrothorn is course taken that. He doesn't have a natural switch into this set. He had Nihilego till, of course, till this week. But since Nihilego is gone, I really have no reason not to use this set. Um, this set was when I decided we hit up our ground and uh, flame charge from the beginning. Uh, we actually have flame charge and nasty plot, and the reason for this is because we're either gonna wall break, because he's absolutely gonna bring Clefable and Ferrothorn. Those are the defensive mods that make sense for this matchup. They are also easy to set up against because it can't damage Salasol. Ferrothorn can have bulldoze. Bulldoze won't KO me, but it won't. It will negate my negate my speed. Clefable can't necessarily do anything, it can't have side shock, I guess, but that's not gonna help. Um, so the idea here is to either, if I need to wall break, I go for Nasty Plot, if I want to outspeed Coco and Neuvern, I'm going to Flame Charge. Uh, it all depends how far we wheel down the team, and uh, the reason is because the only switching he has in theory is Manaphy, Quillfish, and um, 
Dark Manitan, depending on which attack I'll do, which Pokemon I have in front of me. I believe if I have Fair Fair in front of me, Manaphy is going to be switching. Uh, or if I play Fable against me, it's going to be Fair Form potential to switch in or Quillfish. Quillfish is actually after one nasty plot. If I get Rocks up, guarantee KO anyway because of the Toxic Plate boost. Sludge would be just that powerful. Uh, Fire Blast would just do the rest. But yeah, like I said, it is depending on which Pokemon in front of me and what I need to damage. Um, Celeste was going to do a massive amount of work. It was, of course, one of the last Pokemon that made it, and it was mainly because I have other ideas what I wanted to bring. I really want to cover those also, but Celestial, either Wallbreaker or Sweeper, depending on how the game looks at that part when I'm successful to bring it in, because I can't switch in in hard, at least not that very well. So that's something I need to watch out for, of course. But, um, and I've been very weak to rocks. So I think I have three, four, no free Pokemon weak to rocks, so that's going to be an issue. Um, so I really need, I have only so many plays with Celestial. It basically, I think it's only going to get one switch in. If it works, it's going to be great. If it doesn't work, well, it hopefully it gets something down with it. That's basically all I can say. Uh, now for the Pokemon that didn't make it. We're actually two Pokemon here. First and foremost, we have Tauros, uh, Able Tough Speed, Manaphy also, Life Orb variant to get it with Body Slam, Zen Headbutt, Iron Head, Fire Blast. It was a really good Pokemon for this matchup, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, the reason it doesn't make it is because Nihilego is gone, that made Salazzle that much more interesting for this matchup. It, it really is it. Same thing goes with Zygarde. Uh, it was also one of those Pokemon that was kind of considered, but decided anyway, even though we dropped Buzzwall, that it maybe wasn't as effective as I needed to, mainly because the Fable, of course, can hit its first super effective damage back. Now, while we are at Yashaber here, and I think we're able to outspeed him. I think I'm fairly bulky. I don't believe I have any speed investment. No, I had some. So surely for some reason. I couldn't tell you guys now why. Because we were not bringing it. But it said here was fast and errors. I don't tell extreme speed dragon dance. No, we had um, enough speed to, to outspeed Coco after one dragon dance. That was basically it. Uh, but yeah, it should be able to do really well versus this team also. The only reason, like I said, Celestial's making it is because it's it's capable from turn 1. It doesn't need setup and it has more damage output now than Tauros has due to the Nihilego loss. So overall, I feel confident in this team. And the reason I do that is because my opponent is a very, very, I would say, Smogon Bible heavy player. That is, he gets really easily flustered. Um, he gets frustrated very, very easily, and for unconventional sets, um, I'll watch a few of his games just to get a grip on um, how he plays, and I want to try to uh, throw him off as much as I can, which is why I have a Solfus Carognal. I really want to showcase my shakes to him to be able to force him to play defensive. The second he does that, he tends to keep playing defensive for quite some time. That's going to be my opening for Thunderous or Salasal. So the second I see a defensive play, I'm have to respond to it because I think his team synergy is very well well put together. So it's just his mental game that I need to beat. Is he going to think I'm smug on standard or is he gonna be unconventional? I'm kinda of feeling since since the game versus Vips is that hopefully that he got the right mindset how people are playing in leagues and that you can't heavily debate on smogon teams to be able to maneuver yourself around that that said i hope of course that he has yet to learn that and i get something out of it uh, because if he learns from of course Vipsis and how league plays can work then i am in trouble no matter what i do but i feel confident about this team i think i'll absolutely if i don't win i should at least be able to don't shouldn't lose too big at least he has a tendency to use banded darmanitan and um it's going to be either that or Scarfed, I'm sure. Uh, the team I'm seeing him bring in, Clefable, Manaphy, Coco, Ferrothorn, Darmanitan. And then the last Pokemon could be either Majomp, Crocodile, Abomasnow, Quill. They could be any. But I definitely know which five you're absolutely going to bring. Because if he doesn't, he's in trouble. And I'm very aware of that. So that's why the Celestial set is going to be great. I think the Celestial is going to work absolutely fine. And if I actually talked with Vepsis about this, he said it's very, very dumb to have a dual dance nasty plot set, but it serves a purpose, I think, because the reason it's going to work is because it's either going to wall break or it's going to sweep. I'm not going to do both. My opponent shouldn't, well, there really aren't any room for me of doing both because he can defensively check either, either way I go at that point. Uh, I'll probably get, like I said, only one chance of switching in Salasol, and that should count, no matter what happens. So, with that said, 
let's see what happens to the game. We're going to play tomorrow. Um, um, yeah, since it's from Aussie, we're like 12 hours apart. That's going to be tough. Hopefully it works and I'm not too tired or too too awake. <laughs> I don't know. It depends when we play. Um, definitely looking forward to it. So with that said, transition. Ooh, what is up, you guys? And welcome to another live. Hey, have I been doing a lot of those in this league, which I feel is really unfortunate. After Vepsis kind of beat me, you know, I never recovered from that. And uh, nah, the reason is actually it's quite tough uh, recording live when um, you know you have a full house of people talking all the time. I'm actually alone right now, which is great. I'll be that for a few more hours, uh, which means I'm gonna do the you know cleaning and whatnot, that's the family stuff. But yeah, with that said, we're going up against the Flying Bird, or his New South Wilmers. Uh, the guy himself, um, the Flying Bird, is from Australia, so which happens to be really excited. I rather play people from Australia, mainly because we have, well, roughly a 12 hour, hour gap in our time zone, which means that when I stream, they are usually asleep, and of course when I'm asleep, they're usually awake. It's a very tough situation to be in. You know, my father is actually from Melbourne, so um, I'll go there for a few times. Um, a few times, of what, four, I believe. Four, five, four. Um, just to visit, so I really know how it is. I hate coming back to Sweden when you're shifted uh, the time zones that badly, because you really just can't get yourself to sleep. Uh, plus, it take more than a day to get to Australia from Sweden. It's horrendous. Uh, but it's a great place, um, minus the, I would say, spiders. Like, that's the thing, people talk about how dangerous animals there are in Australia, I'll say, like, I rarely saw in a snake, um, which people are very, very scared of, but we had those spotters, like, all of a sudden, great spider on the wall, you're like, yeah, I don't know how you got there, but my god, <laughs> you got there. And so, the, the anacrophobia, which is something I don't have in Sweden, kind of kicks in in Australia, they're, they're, they're a, a very big shift of sizes. Like your average spiders, like let's say, like my palm at best, like that, like half my palm is a regular spider in Sweden. They are easily half like like this in Australia easily. I might exaggerate you, but what I'm trying to say is that they are huge. <laughs> I hate them. Uh, but that said, uh, I had quite a tough time prep with this team. Um, not because the team design wise are like instantly good well it's a good team I'm not trying to say the right thing here the thing is here it's very matchup dependent so I may put myself in a tougher or better position um, depending on when we got to actually disconnect there again hmm depending on what it brings um, the thing is here he has Tapu Koko it's a superb Pokemon and if you do the use that Pokemon right I'm I could very well not work at all here because I'm actually not bringing Sagard I'm not bringing a a ground type here, which means electric rain is going to be as effective as he decides it to be. <laughs> and that's kind of scary. The thing is, yes, Saigar is easily shicked here. His team is definitely built for dealing with Saigar quite well. So I have no reason bringing it. Ferraforn is annoying, and um, I could go with his coil set, but it's speedy enough to just work it against me. And the setup might actually not work with Clefable, which is also a Pokemon he has on his team. So overall, it's a very well-structured team against my team. So it all is super heavily dependent on what he brings versus me. And I thought I went over that in my team builder, but I really want to just stretch that. The, the six I'm bringing, fail to connect with the other trader. Please start again from the beginning. Let's see. Uh, communication with the other trader was interrupted. I'm just going to ask him what's going on. I wonder if see I try to invite if he has a misgen Pokemon or anything like that. Let's see are all Pokemons Leo Basically one has to do this from from time to time they can I just um pinpoint like what's the issue is um, I think my word if my word wasn't really I'm gonna check that if that doesn't work this time I have to double check my own Pokemon's uh, let's see come on now 
communication, please stand by. Because we got quite far, at least. I signed myself. Right? Fingers crossed. I mean, it's after all said and done. Like, I hate being in this spot. Like, I don't want to. How do you say it? I don't want to um, um, tell my opponent he might be doing something wrong because it's very unlikely at this side. Uh, I mean, most people are playing now are really know what they're doing, but you really just want to invite that question and see if they're unsure or whatnot. Uh, with that said, I really, really I could just as well screw up myself, but it doesn't seem to be the issue here, which is good. Uh, but yeah, what I was trying to say is that depending on what Pokemon he brings, I could be in a very tough spot. Um, this is a team that I I feel confident. Darmanitan, however, is very tough on me. And uh, yeah, just not a big fan of this matchup. Um, I don't believe any way I should have turned this team around, I should be having an upper hand. This is a matchup I think I'm having a rough time against. And let's see if I can confirm that. Kinda, kinda, yeah. Um, this is definitely what I would say an ideal team versus me. We have our Manhattan here, which is gonna be very, very tough. I'm just gonna take a picture of this team. Um, and we have a very speedy team here. He doesn't see a Greninja, which means he can definitely abuse the speed he got. Um, let's see, can I get the focus here? So I'm definitely not regretting not taking with me Sigurd versus this. Uh, the Dark Manitan, Manaphy, um, Coco. I'm in love with the Coco. Yeah. Got it for a Lolo. Like, this is what I would say the ideal team to beat me, hands down. Uh, that said, I think Fundress and Neuburn is going to be very important here. Uh, or I mean Thunders and Zalassel. Call it Northern. Uh, I think I'm going to lead off with... Um, what do you think? He's going to lead off with either Varathorn or... Darmanitan, right? So with that in mind... Jesus. I have no idea. I'm going to lead off with the freaking Tangrove. At least then, if he goes for a Flare Blitz, that's going to be damage on that guy. Let's go go for it. I know the ideal... Um, the ideal um, start would be Dayenshi. But issue with Dayenshi is that I have Barberry Berry and not Sugar Berry. We have Barberry for Farathorn. Uh, since it's such an easy switch in here. So I just really hope it starts off with Farathorn. Um... If it starts with Darman and then, like, I'm gonna shake a bit, but that's about it. Start with Tapu Coco. I think that's good. Um, for those who wonder, like, the main issue with Tapu Coco is the Sea Braybird. They shouldn't KO from here, but it's... that's a thing. Um... Let's see. I'm gonna go for an Earthquake, hoping he U-turns. U-turn of all switches. Oof. That's the Brave Bird, right? That's the Brave Bird. Uh, <laughs> no, Twinkle Tackle, oh dear. <laughs> My heart! <laughs> like, I don't know the dances. So I'm like, huh, Jesus. I shouldn't KO at least. I just did quite the chunk though. Earthquake shouldn't KO at all. Um, or should damage it. And any damage on Coco is good damage. Oh, my heart. Just skipped a beat there. I was like, here comes the Braver. You know, I prepped for it. I know I can survive it. But no, that's, that's going to bring me down. Um, so U turn or Volt Switch, right? Should go for Hidden Power Fire. Fireform must be a switch in. He's definitely gonna switch out. Yeah, there's a U turn. 
We should take this. Yeah. Bring me Ferrafawn. We want to damage that Pokemon as much as possible. As I try to regenerate with this Pokemon. Um, goes to Neuvern. Far worse. That was a surprising play though. Um, now this Pokemon can have her it left of us. So it's a bulky Neuburn. Oh, as bulky as a Neuburn can get, I guess. Um, that Pokemon should also U turn, I'm sure. Uh, we're gonna bring Silmaria, um, the Daenshi. Um He's either Hurricane or U turns. Either way is fine, but if he goes to Ferraform, we're going to have trouble. Trouble is confirmed. The thing is here, he don't... He can't defog himself. Or the Neuvern could defog, that's about it. So the question is whether I want to stay in against Ferrafo and get my rocks up, knowing that this is my dedicated switch into the Armanitan, which very well could have Earthquake. There are so many variables in this. Um, Ferrafo should be a switch in no matter what. I think we got a good start, but that's about it. Goes to Coco, actually. Do we want to go for a ruse? That's the que question, though. We've seen U-turn, we've seen Dazzling Gleam most likely. Thunderbolt and I think Roost is a quite a decent play here, isn't it? I really want to take Coco with me. Uh, so if he goes for Roost, we'll take it out. And if he goes for Thunderbolt, it's gonna hurt. And it's gonna hopefully be worth that risk. Um, oh, not the paralyzation. Oh, not now. Ooh, Coco's out. Good. Good, good. But damn, that para is gonna be... Uh, that's gonna be annoying. That's gonna be very annoying. Did not wanna see that. Because, yeah, he get a play here with the Darmanitan. If it is Scarf, it's gonna be putting a lot of pressure on me. For sure. Where it's effectively the best Pokemon on the field. I need Rocks to be able to wrap up the game. Which means I need Rock versus Ferrafawn or Rocks versus Glevable. Oh! Ugh. Was it worth it though? And this is my only Pokemon that should be carrying Heal Bell, so. <laughs> Never prep for hacks. And it's all about 10% chance. It's not, like, I'm not frustrated or anything like that. It's just, why that Mon? Of every Mon, why him? Alright, Manaphy. Would expect something like that. Depending on the set, we should be able to check it. Um... Because it's not a sea user, we know that, so he can't speed himself up. And we are an Assault Vest variant of this beast. And no terrain, no more. Not that it affects me anyway. So Freeze Dry is our easiest play here. Um, the only Pokemon coming in on that easily is uh, Darmanitan. Yeah, there we are. I do not like this Pokemon one bit. Freeze Dry does. Not as much as I thought it would. Well. Surprisingly, my best play is here at Tangrove. Tangrove is actually. Since. Let's face it. Um, 
It's either that or Silmeria. It's all Skull Knight Pokemon. Because I'm pretty sure this is going to be a Scarf Pokemon. So we got this Pokemon in range. Now we only need to get Manaphy in range. He really should U-turn here. And if he U-turns, I should be able to capitalize on the Regenerator. And if he Flare Blitz, well, I get an opening. And hopefully get up rocks. Let's find out. Yeah, it goes for U-turn. What's possibly the safest play he could go for? Still does a lot, though. Still does a lot. The bigger question about that play is, however, if it is um, scoffed or banded. Or it could just be Adamant, which... Adamant Scarf, which works quite alright. Uh, not a big fan of that Pokemon, but yeah. Good thing I didn't go for DNC. I don't want any residual damage on DNC until I get my rocks up. So Manaphy is back. I think we only dictated the place he makes there. Um, and since it went for a Scald... Dear Lord, why am, am I not Guts here? It really doesn't matter though. Uh, I still just go to Chronal. He should pull a double here on me if he's really smart. Um, or set up a nasty plot. Keeps going for Skulls, right? There it is. Keeps going for Freeze Try. Like, Darmanitan still gets damage onto it. We saw you turn with scene scald. We know about the nasty plot. And I'm thinking he thinks I will go for a recover here, but since I'm assault vest, I'm fully offensive. The task that my Kerogonal has is quite simple. He switches out again, however. Um, goes to Darmanitan again. So I, I only want to wheel that Pokemon down, that's the only thing I want. We get those like kind of lockdowns when you feel like we're going to get disconnected. Um, This time if we go for Flare Blitz, he should try to KO me. Um, or I would. Should I sack for Raichu? Looking at the team, like what could it possibly do anyway? Not a whole lot at this point, so no, we're sacking it. He should go for another U-turn, however. Um, but then I still get momentum out of that, because he has to dictate his switch in. But if he goes for Flare Blitz, well... Then we get a position I kind of want. Um, so we don't get that. We're going to get Tangrove knocked out. Darmanitan got him. Darmanitan KO Tangrove. So we're switching here is Neuvern. Right. Time to get up my rocks. He could have Steel Wing. Um, I'm fearing that. He has a U turn, clearly. Doesn't do anything. His switching should be. What should it be? Manaphy again? I wonder. I really, really just want to get my rocks up. Alright, here it is, Veraphone. We get rocks up. Crucial. Crucial for this.
I'm some hysterically weak to rocks. Yeah, I need to switch in. I know it's probably what I need to do. It's not pretty. It's the only play I got. Lead seed. Alright, and he misses that. Great. Do we nasty plot or do we. No, we nasty plot. He stays in. Good. Does he have bulldoze or anything like that? Iron head. That shouldn't do anything. And I believe we got ourselves the GG. He switches out. Goes to Darmanitan, which I believe is either Scarfed or anything like that. By getting our speed up. We should now be able to outspeed everything in the team. The only thing stopping us now is a possible unaware. Oh jeez, I get so nervous. I'm so nervous I have Sludge Bomb instead of Sludge Wave. That's how nervous I am. Snowyvern couldn't be Scarfed, right? We gotta knock that Pokemon out, right? Yes! Yes! It's all about the Mana Fee now. It's all about that Mana Fee. <laughs> this is not a pretty sight. Depending on the games go, it's not gonna be pretty. Ooh. I think the best part is... Um, Vipsis told me I'd be dumb if I'm bringing double setup on this mon. I said, fuck it, if it works, it works. And I'm pretty sure it will. And I bashed on Salasil for being so bad. And here we are. She finds a way. The Orchid. Oh. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It's still though, this, the man if he can survive it. Even with rocks in mind, I'll just gonna hope. I could go for a nasty plot, but you know, I'll, I'll be very, very, very oblivious to take that route. He could have bulldozed, and that's just gonna knock me out. Please die. <laughs> we get a crit, we don't find out though. Oh my god, Salassel. Salassel. Oh, what am I experiencing? Oh. It's one of those things, I was looking over my team over and over, I felt this was the best set against me, or I mean the best series of mods against me. <sighs> like, yeah, I have been so nervous. I knew once I get the flame charts going, he said in one hour head, I knew this is gonna be game. The Coco is gone, that could potentially be Scarf, but it wasn't. Oh, Jesus. And no disrespect to my opponent like that, he just gave me that opening. And that opening was so huge. Like, yeah, I'm using a niche set on my Salasso, absolutely. But him giving me that, it just dictated the whole game. And I really feel bad about my opponent because he had what I would say the right matchup to pull this off. He should have pulled this off. Um, he really should have pulled this off. Um... I just win because of I got that second turn with Slassel. Slassel getting two turns to actually get fully boosted is what dictates this win or loss. It is that simple. Um, I really want to see my opponent's side of this battle, um, how he was prepping or anything like that, or like that. I definitely feel that his Ferrophone was the ideal set for me with Ferrophone, which was a Pokemon I was feeling was going to be super effective towards me, was having. Iron Head or Gyro Ball. Primarily uh, Gyro Ball mainly because of Sargod. 
and then bulldoze to make sure that Salasal can set up against me, and then uh, Stealth Rocks or Spikes to get it with Lead Seed or Protect uh, with an Aka Berry. I think that would have been the ideal set versus me, uh, which was something I was fearing a lot. So coming out on top here, yeah, I am, I am happy. I am very happy. And this is, I think, the third sweep I get too. Like, we had Kongelder sweeping. No, we had Dajansi sweeping. We had Clefable sweeping last week. We had Thunder sweeping. And now we have Salasal sweeping. All of the mons are doing their part. And I think this pretty much, depending on how the other games go in, but I think I'm kind of safe for playoff now. Uh, and I really hope, and I'm, I'm really sorry I'm going to say this to Flying Bird, I really hope you actually turn out alright and actually go to playoff yourself. The team is great. Uh, I actually don't believe and you did anything wrong besides staying with Ferrafone. I think that's the only misplay you make. It's just so extremely dictating for the situation. It actually is. Um, that's all I actually can say. Uh, and I think he's kicking himself over that. He definitely knew once he saw Flame Charge and this is... This is not gonna turn right. <laughs> so yeah, with that said guys, um, thank you of course as always for watching. And um, like I said, make sure to check out the Flying Bird channel. Which is gonna be linked down below. Uh, for his side of the battle, how he experienced the things. The things, the thing about this game. So with that said, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye. So, there is really not often that I leave some afterthoughts for a live game. Uh, most often than not, they're not required, but for this game I feel that they were... I kind of warned before this game that my opponent was a bit of a VGC and a smoking fanatic and got easily flustered um, if he wasn't prepped right or he couldn't um, see what set was what. And this is something that you have to expect for in league plays. There are not going to be very often a standard set. And um, my opponent lashed out, and I was kind of expecting him to do that. But at the same time, I really don't want to take it at, as of I really just believe. If you're so oblivious to your own place and make, well, trying to call out people and uh, make false assumptions out of that logic that you so hold there, then I want to respond to it in the way I feel suitable for the situation. After all, the person I'm talking about, the flying bird, he's quite young. He tr he behaved himself like a quite young kid, so I can only go so far when it comes to my honesty. Uh, first and foremost, he did kind of reach out on Twitter. Um, thank you, I should say, my followers for telling me that. They clearly knew exactly what who he meant. Um, he said that he did everything right in the game, he built everything right, and that my opponent was bullshitting him uh, to victory. I don't know what it means by bullshitting him to victory, I think my plan was on part actually, and I'd probably say this, if you built for everything, why in God's green earth did you stay in with Veraphorn who couldn't attack Salasal? Um, it's really just that one thing, and also of course, there really wasn't anything checking Saigard, considering he had nothing that was Scarfed or Dragon, then Saigard would, well, really, really just eat his team. So, mm -hmm. everything right. It's suggestive as best, and subjective, I guess you'd say, at best. But I can see where he's coming from, but everything right. Um, with 11 months to prep for, it's impossible. You'd be a fool thinking you did that. Um, another thing he said was that the worst player was luckier here. Um, I guess that's true to some extent. He did get me paralyzed and burn, but uh, I think he means the other way around, which is unfortunate if he thinks that way, because he missed a lead seed and he got a crit uh, on himself with Manaphy. The crit ended up actually not mattering, and it was because it was an offensive Manaphy, as I suspected, with 86 in his special defense. So what that meant was that roll was at minimum 98%, and since I had rocks on the field, it didn't matter, it was a 1 kill no matter what, even without the crit. And missing the lead seed? Yeah, maybe. Since it was a lead seed protect variant of Ferrafon, he was forcing out it to say that he could have protect stalls versus it, potentially switch in and out, I guess. Uh, but even at that, that's very, very tough to say, thinking that would be a play, and even more so since he went for our head the second turn afterwards instead of a lead seed again. If that was your plan, you should probably fold up on it to have a hard time just thinking out your ass, actually, when you come to that. So, mm, I don't buy it. 
so yeah, worst play was lucky here. Yeah, my opponent was absolutely lucky here, getting myself paralyzed and burn for sure. Um, Celestial was a bad set. I mean, I'll take it. I absolutely have to think that it's not an ideal set for Celestial, but um, it was bad enough to beat you. So, oof. I guess it speaks more to how bad you are. I don't know what you want to go with that. It's if you're trying to offend me, it's it's a dumb way of putting it. <laughs> it actually is. If you let that Pokemon dual setup versus you, it was not supposed to dual setup versus you. I'll give you that. The just the reason that you stayed in with Ferrothorn is a very naive thing to do and not have anything for it. You really didn't have a switch into Zelazel since you had no no scarf anymore. Coco was gone. Yeah. It was not a good time there, I'll give you that. Um, I actually have no idea what you mean by having that Slash was a bad set. It was the perfect set for this matchup because you dropped Neholego. That meant that a dual stab combination with Slashel was close to perfect versus this. The only thing Shiknik was, what was that? Quillfish. And I'm pretty sure it was 2 at KO after Nasty Plot and you would be very unlikely to actually kill us last with liquidation if you were going to carry that consider that you tend to be standard that probably see you using skulls and that would do even less here so yeah mm -mm. i think you're really really just pushing it for what you think is right or wrong I'll, I'll try to be as nice as i can here and say try to learn from your mistake instead of blaming others for your mistakes it's you look to be at least 16 to 20 somewhere around there I can only imagine how life is. I really can. I've been a teenager myself. But once you start to actually learn from your mistakes instead of blaming others, just maybe, maybe you'll get better. I'll definitely think so. Um, there is really no way of setting it. My team here was better built for the situation. Having a Scarf Star Mana Time would have made total sense of this matchup. Just the reason that it wasn't made this game a lot more easier for me. Let's say that you actually, for some reason, dealt with Salasal. You still wouldn't have been able to outspeed my Thunderous, which was a major threat at that point, because Neuvern absolutely couldn't KO that, and I'll easily get out Nasty Plot out. And of course, with Sludge Wave and Focus Blast, you really can just only hope that I miss a few Focus Blasts versus Ferrophone. That's as worse as it gets. Darmanitan wasn't a threat because it was banded, because I was going to be forced eventually to sack Cryonagonal versus it, and then I would have found out that it was banded. I had my suspicions, but that would absolutely confirm it. And this, of course, even worse, Stelfer was on the field. I don't know if you had defog and whatnot. So it turns out to whether or not I'll actually think. Now, now I think about it, if Darmanic was going to be switched in, Stealth Rock plus two freeze dry was going to KO that Pokemon. So yeah, um, I definitely believe there, there were things here that could have been absolutely better. And I think. To be honest, if you're going to keep telling yourself that there are a standard set for every Pokemon, then you're not going to get far in a league. That is that is as easy as it gets. You need to be smarter than that. Then you absolutely need to stop blaming others for your own mistakes. Because that's the difference between being a bad player or learning from a battle. If you want to keep being bad, I mean, by all means, go for it. But sure as hell, don't blame me for being <laughs> that I beat you. You don't have yourself to blame for making crucial mistakes versus a player that plays hyper-offensively, are known to set up every chance to get. You gave me two turns of doing that. You only can blame yourself.